So I've really been enjoying Earth's Bark. It's a solid show, fun, well-written, and full of heart and character. There's clearly a lot of passion and effort put into the show by its creators, informed by a genuine love for the franchise. I seriously think that Earth's Bark is shaping up to be one of the best Transformer shows ever, and it's already surpassed basically everything that's come out in at least the past decade. One of the reasons why I like Earthspark so much is because of the way it's propelling the mythos forward. Instead of just rehashing the same story for the upteenth time, it's using a lot of that as backstory instead of just story. Perhaps the most obvious manifestation of this is, of course, the Terrans, the next generation of Transformers. But the Terrans are not the first time we've seen a next generation of Transformers. It's the first time we've seen the idea presented in this positive or specific manner, yes, but it's not the first time ever. That distinction belongs to the lead villains of Marvel's Generation 2 comic book, Jaxus and, more broadly, his Cybertronian empire. And you better believe that G2 interprets the idea of being the next generation very differently from Earthspark. It's precisely that difference in interpretation that would make Jaxus the perfect villain for Earthspark going forward. Jaxus was created by Simon Furman and Derek Yaniger. His backstory is a little involved, but to set the stage, Jaxus was created sometime after the Ark and Nemesis left Cybertron, some 4 million years ago. He was created via budding, a long-forgotten process of Transformer reproduction. I'm not going to elaborate on budding because, well, it's kind of stupid and I don't really think it's all that important. What is important is that because of the circumstances of his creation, Jaxus sees himself as distinct from the Autobots and Decepticons as part of a new generation of Transformers. Eventually, Jaxus leaves Cybertron with a bunch of other newly created Transformers and starts cyberforming other inhabited worlds, creating the Cybertronian Empire. When he crosses paths with Optimus Prime and Megatron, he straight up dismisses them as these antiquated, failed relics of a bygone era. I'll mention here that the comic ends with the reveal that Liege Maximo is the true ruler of the Cybertronian Empire, and that Jaxus is merely one of his servants. Now, at the time, we didn't really know much else about Liege Maximo since, well, he was literally in one page of the comic. Basically, though, the gist with Jaxus is that he's a space colonizer who sees himself and his empire as something brand new, as something far above that which has ever come before. Jaxus is the perfect thematic counterpoint to the Terrans. As I said at the start of the video, they're both the next generation of Transformers, but they interpret what that idea means in two completely different ways. Jaxus is a straight-up villain. He sees his ancestors as beneath him, their war as beneath him. They're evolutionary throwbacks, mistakes that need to be corrected and then forgotten about. He's the leader of an empire that genocides planets, that cyberforms them into Cybertron-esque planets because he believes in technological purity, because he sees anything less than that as unworthy of existence. This mentality extends from the Autobots and Decepticons to organic life as a whole. I'll take this time to talk about the thematic undertone of the G2 comic. See, it's got this very weirdly regressive message to it. The whole thing with budding and the swarm kind of reads as a theological moral panic of sorts. The Cybertronian Empire, the next generation, is presented as uniformly, unambiguously evil just from the circumstances of their creation, just by their existence. I don't know if this was intentional, but at the end of the day, that is how it reads, and that kind of sucks, really. Jaxus, as originally depicted, is a very pessimistic, downright cynical interpretation of what it means to be the next generation. He embodies evil, arrogance, and hatred. That's it. The Terrans, on the other hand, are a much more positive, much more optimistic take on that concept. Created from the Emberstone, they're from both Cybertron and Earth. Although some might dismiss them as lower caste life forms, the Terrans are the next generation of Transformers. They are the future of their race. And that sort of weighs on some of them. So much of Season 1 has been devoted to exploring what that means, what it means to be the next generation of Transformers, what it means to be of two worlds. But at the end of the day, it's clear that the Terrans are motivated to learn from the Autobots and the Decepticons, and eventually become something more. As Megatron says, they are the future of their race, but the Terrans don't interpret that as meaning that they're better than what's come before, which is a fascinating contrast to Jaxus's dismissive attitude. Introducing Jaxus at this point in the story would be interesting because so far, Earthspark has fleshed out how the Terrans are the next generation of Transformers. Jaxus would provide a very interesting counterpart, and would force the Terrans to maybe reconsider their position. Jaxus would force them to ask questions like if they are better, or if they should really be learning lessons from these supposed warmongers. On the other hand, Jaxus would be forced to reconsider his position. The Terrans are bright-eyed and optimistic, and Jaxus could struggle to understand that. It's a clash of ideas that would make a very interesting conflict going forward. Let me start this section by just addressing the elephant in the room. The end of Earthspark's first season has set up something as a big threat in space. There's a lot of speculation on what this could be, and sure, this could totally wind up being Jax's. I don't think it's super likely, mind you, but I'll be keeping that in mind for the rest of the video, even if I'm not going to elaborate on it too much. 
So in our spark, we have no idea what's going on with Cybertron. After the space bridge was destroyed, contact with Cybertron was lost. The Transformers on Earth don't even know Cybertron exists anymore, and they don't know what happened to the All Spark either since they threw it into the exploding space bridge. I think that we'll return to Cybertron at some point in the series run, and this would be the perfect place to introduce Jaxus and his new Cybertronian empire. Let's say that Jaxus, like his original G2 incarnation, starts out as a Decepticon, one left behind on the planet. Although we don't really know where the Allspark is, maybe it landed back on Cybertron, and maybe Jaxus found it. This would, naturally, make him a force to be reckoned with. Using the power of the Allspark, Jaxus would conquer Cybertron and become its sole ruler. But this is not where his ambitions would end. The war depleted Cybertron of its natural life, and so Jaxus uses the Allspark to create a whole new generation of Transformers. Eventually, Jaxus' Allspark generation could supplant the previous generation of Transformers who had also been left behind on Cybertron. Jaxus would not be content with the conquest of Cybertron alone. He would eventually start expanding outwards, building a new Cybertronian empire. If they come across an inhabited planet, then, well, that's no reason for Jaxus to stop. When the Transformers on Earth re-establish contact with Cybertron, he's less than thrilled. He was in no hurry to find the Autobots and Decepticons, and he'd honestly rather just leave them in their stupid war in the dustbin of history. Even though he was a Decepticon, he probably doesn't have much respect for Megatron or Starscream or Shockwave or anyone anymore. Power corrupts, and in Jaxus's eyes, he's far surpassed them and become part of a superior breed of Transformer. I love the idea that he's got this arrogance when talking to Optimus or Megatron. I think that kind of dismissive attitude would be really interesting. And of course, he has basically no respect for the humans, regarding them as little more than insects. Maybe he even sees how humans hate Transformers and grows to resent them even more. But the real meat of Jaxus, of course, comes from his interactions with the Terrans. The most interesting way to handle this is, as I mentioned above, by having Jaxus see them as kin, as fellow next-generation Transformers. Jaxus could start out by trying to drive a bit of a wedge between the Terrans and the other older Transformers. But maybe over time he becomes disappointed, disgusted with them. Maybe he learns about their dedication to this organic world and to the old ways of the Autobots and Decepticons, and he becomes their true enemy. The Terrans on the other side might find some of Jax's rhetoric very appealing, especially at first. The idea that they're more, that they shouldn't be beholden to the ways of the Autobots and the Decepticons. I could see that really clicking for some of them, especially given the burden they've been forced to shoulder so far. But Jaxus's contempt for their history, for the Autobots and for the humans would force the Terrans to realize that this guy is straight up evil. Perhaps they'd learn about his expansionist plans and perhaps how he wants to do the same to Earth, which would really be the final straw for them. The rivalry between the two of them practically writes itself. Jaxus is a fascinating character, one that I have a lot of love for, and he feels like such a perfect and natural fit for Earthspark. Introducing him would allow the show to really delve deeper into its themes and messages. He would provide a unique and interesting perspective on basically everything the show has established so far, forcing our protagonists to really grow and mature. But those are of course just my thoughts on the matter. What do you all think about this? Should Jaxus make an appearance in Earthspark? Are there any other villains you want to see in the show? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, stay safe, and until next time.